Assassin's Cow is one of the best hunter exotics, and today I'm going to show you how to build an effective endgame solo 3.0 build that's going to have you punching your way to easy loot. I'm going to show you the solo 3.0 setup, the weapons, the mods, and armor, so you can scorch, ignite, and burn all the enemies that dare to get in your way. Well, if you're new around here or found this useful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for all the latest Destiny 2 content and turn on notifications by hitting that bell. Roughly 98% of viewers who watch this week in video games aren't subscribed, so subscribe today and never miss an update. Without further delay, let's dive into this build. So first of all, the Solar 3.0 setup. So I have my Super, I'm using Blade Barrage, my class ability. I'm using Gambler's Dodge, my melee, it's Knife Trick. And for my Grenade, it is a Healing Grenade. For my Aspects, I'm using Knock em Down, so your Solar Supers are enhanced. With Blade Barrage, that launches more projectiles, and also, while Radiant, final blows your equip throwing knife fully refund your melee energy. Then we got On Your Mark, so Precision Final Blows grant you and nearby allies increased weapon handling and reload speed for a short duration. That stacks up to three times. Also, activating your class ability immediately grants maximum stacks of On Your Mark. Well, next up, let's have a look at the fragments. So we've got Ember of Torches. Power of melee kills against combatants make you and your nearby allies radiant. We'll get Ember of Singeing, so your class ability recharges faster when you scorch targets. We'll get Ember of Emprian, so Solar Weapon or Ability Final Blows extend the duration of restoration and Radiant effects applied to you. We've also got Ember of Solace, so Radiant and Restoration effects applied to you have an increased duration. And finally, we've got Ember of Wonder, so rapidly defeating multiple targets with Solar Ignitions generates an orb of power. Well, next up, we have the exotic armor, so this one is Assassin's Cowl. It's an exotic hunter helmet with the perk Vanishing Execution. And this is where Powered Melee Final Blows grant invisibility and restore a portion of health and shields. So finishes and final blows against more powerful targets increase the duration of the invisibility and the amount of health and shields restored. You can get this one if you complete the Shadow Keep campaign as a hunter. Well next up we've got the weapons and this is tailored to endgame PvE content. First of all in the kinetic slot we've got Arbalest. It's an exotic kinetic linear fusion rifle. Checking out the perks, we've got Compounding Force, so fires slugs that cause massive damage to elemental shields of enemy combatants, and also Disruption Break, so breaking the enemy's shield with the weapon makes more vulnerable to kinetic damage for a brief period. You can get this one from Xur or Exotic Engrams, and it's also great for dealing with anti-barrier champions, so really, really recommend this one. In the energy slot, I'm using the BXR Battler, that is a legendary energy pulse rifle dealing solar damage, comes with a custom frame called a Legacy PR55 frame, and that means it dramatically increases accuracy, stability, and targeting while you are hip firing. For PvE, Outlaw and Kill Clip would be a decent roll, but also if you can get one with Incandescent, that is even better. And you can get this weapon from Dares of Eternity. Well, next up in the power slot, we've got Fixed Odds. It's a legendary power machine gun with a high impact frame, meaning it's slow firing and high damage. The weapon is more accurate when stationary and you're aiming down the sights. For PvE, Field Prep and Incandescent would be a decent roll. So Incandescent works really, really well with the build. So if you can get it on your energy weapon and your power weapon, you are really, really in the money. So with Incandescent, it says defeating a target spreads Scorch to those nearby. More powerful combatants and opposing guardians cause Scorch in a larger radius. Well, next up, we have the mod. So Melee Wellmaker. Powered Melee Combatant Final Blows spawn Elemental Wells and match your subclass energy type. You've got Bountiful Well, so Elemental Well mods that cause you to spawn Elemental Wells now stack, spawning additional wells for each additional copy of the mod you have equipped. We have Font of Might, so picking up an Elemental Well that matches your subclass energy type grants you a temporary bonus to weapon damage of the same element type. Then I'm using Unstoppable Pulse Rifle, Overload Machine Gun, and also Resilience mods, so try to get to 100 for that 40% damage resistance. Well, next up, let's have a look at the gameplay. So this build is all about charged melees, igniting enemies, going invisible after melee kills. Plus, you can trigger your own healing, and you've got a killer super as well. Now, it's a great all-round build that's going to easily take you through endgame PvE content. Now, Gunslingers had a great buff when it came to melee abilities, meaning it pairs perfectly well with Assassin's Cowl. Knock them down, an Ember of Torches is going to help you get near infinite melee charges. Plus, you get a decent damage buff too. You now the fragment pairing is going to allow hunters to throw loads of knives, plus you're going to be generating loads of elemental wells as well. So the build is focused around the very powerful Assassin's Cowl, 
This is not only going to allow you to go invisible, but you get a decent amount of health back after a kill too, meaning you can get out of a tight spot easily. You can also pair this up with healing grenades to make it even better for support. You know, combining your attacks with finishers, you're going to get longer invisibility. So if you get into trouble, then you'll easily be able to escape, recalibrate, and then get back into the action nice and quickly. Knife Trick is really good because you can take down smaller enemies fast. Plus, you can use this to apply Scorch Stacks on larger targets as well. Apply enough Scorch Stacks and they will ignite, meaning you will cause them to explode. So this is one of the reasons why incandescent weapons are really, really good. Now, our super is going to come in handy too, given we can soften them up with the melee grenades and weapons, and then simply finish them off with our super. Well, for the weapons, I'm using a combination which means you're going to be able to take on all endgame content with these. Arbalus is going to take out barrier champions, then the energy and the power weapons are reserved for champion killing weapons. Now, I'm using the BXR Battler, a solar pulse rifle, which allows me to take out unstoppable champions. And the power slot, I'm using fixed odds, which is a solar machine gun, and that is going to allow us to take care of overload champions. So with these three weapons, you're going to be able to take on any champion. However, do feel to mix and match your solar weapons in the energy and the power slots to match champions, you know, as it all really depends on the mods and what season you are playing in. Also, if you're not playing endgame PvE content, then choose any weapon that you like to play with. Well, let me know in the comments what you think of the build and let me know if you've got any improvements. And that is it for this guide for this Hunter Solo 3.0 build with Assassin's Cowl and Destiny 2. And as always, thank you so much for watching or listening. For more Destiny 2 content like this, hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. Or you can check me out on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the other videos on the channel. Well, thanks again, and I'll see you soon. System, he and I deciphered their messages. His assistance was trying at times, but proved invaluable, and prepared us for what followed. I see.